In this illustration, we're going to use argon to make a pattern for a jigsaw puzzle. Let's begin. Our first tool is going to be a rectangle tool. Use the rectangle tool, you pick one corner and then another. And it's really easy and fast. Now, that rectangle isn't 7 inches by 7 inches, and rarely would you ever try to draw something exactly to size on a screen because it's so much easier just to type in the dimensions in the width and height box. So down here I'm going to type in a 7 for width, and in height I'm going to type in 3.5 times 2, and I'll hit Enter, and you'll see that it changed to a 7 because these are both calculators. It's very powerful. You can do all kinds of mathematical calculations from square roots to, to division. It's great. You don't need a calculator on your desk. Another thing happened is that my 7-inch square box is now bigger than the screen I'm using to make this video, so part of it just flew away and disappeared. Don't panic. It's really easy to get it back. We go to View. We come down to Zoom All and notice that Control F is the shortcut for this operation. There is my box. Now, this particular puzzle is going to have 49 pieces, which means that each piece is approximately an inch square. So we need to make a grid to be able to do this. And there are several ways to do grids, not the least of which is, is to use Argon's grid function. Control G for grid, and you have a grid. This is a user-definable pattern. You can make this any way you see fit. And if you happen to like to draw on graph paper, this can be great. I don't. So I'm going to turn it off by hitting Control G again. I have another way of making a grid that's just as fast. Let's click one line and make a diagonal from corner to corner. The drafting assistant makes that really easy. And I'm going to come down here and use this one little tool that's really cool. And it's divide curves into a specified number of equal length curves. OK, let's divide some curves. Uh, oh, wait a minute. These are just straight lines. In the world of CAD, a straight line is also known as a curve. Don't ask me why. It's confusing. But since we've talked about it, it's no longer confusing. Let's change the segments to 7. It's asking me to pick the curve to divide. Well, it would be this one. So let's click on it. And you didn't see anything happen, but I can tell you that that curve just got divided into seven pieces. I'm deleting three, four are left, and we're going to use those four little lines to make our 49 square grid. How? With the drafting assistant. This is really cool. I want to lay down some temporary construction lines. And to do that in Argon, you hold down the Control and the Shift key. Notice the cursor changes. Now when I find that endpoint, all I have to do is click my left mouse button down and hold it, and then make a general move horizontally and let up on the mouse, and voila, it strikes this construction line. And I can do the same thing with the vertical movement to make a vertical construction line. And look how fast this is. My, oh my. Is this cool or what? And this is how we make our grid. Well, that's done. And let's just go ahead and get rid of these. So I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and then I'm going to marquee select the rest of those, and hit Delete. They serve their purpose, and let's get rid of them. OK, now we have a 49 square grid. Great. Let's make our first puzzle path piece that we're going to cut on the jigsaw. For that, Argon has lots of tools that will allow us to make really cool curves. This is the one we're going to use, vector spline through control points. And it says, just pick your control points. OK, great. The problem is, is that this puzzle is too far away to do really smooth, accurate work. So we want to come in and work on a bigger scale. Well, I have a magnifying glass here that allows me to do that, where I click on the magnifying glass, and I can just click what I want to see, and it zooms in. It's a little crude, and you can't really control it that easily. Let's go back by going to Control F, get our selection arrow, and here's another way to zoom in, which is really fast, because it gives your left hand something to do. Hold down the Control and the Shift key and get that goofy little icon back. And instead of stroke zooming horizontal or stroke zooming 
uh, vertical. Let's do a diagonal and you'll see that that marquee I made zoomed in on that box. And that is used all the time and I rarely use the magnifying glass because my left hand doesn't like to be bored. Alright, let's get our curve tool and pick some selection points. Let's click there, 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 and here. And you sort of get the idea and we're close. But that's really not what I would consider a classic jigsaw puzzle profile. So we want to fix that. However, your curve may not look like that when you do this. It may look something more like this. And if you get a jagged, really ugly curve, it just means that the resolution is set low. Why would you have the resolution set low? Well, if your computer is underpowered, uh, it makes drawing faster if it doesn't have to do perfect work. I happen to have a fast computer right here, so I'm going to right click on that, come down to resolution, change it to super fine, and there I have my nice curve, but it's still kind of bad. So what I'd like to do is highlight it. By default, I have those control points so that they don't show. By bringing them back, I hit control D. Now I can deselect my curve pick any of these points and I can tweak and use the mathematical functions that are built into these spline curves to get exactly what I want. And if I want to move that whole thing over I can highlight more than one and you can see that I have all these crazy options but I just want to bring that back to right about there. Highlight that curve, hit control D to turn that off and this is the fundamental curve that we're going to use to complete the entire puzzle. The whole idea in CAD is to draw as little as possible. For some strange reason, doing as little work as possible has always appealed to me. Okay, let's see the whole big picture again. Control F. And now Argon has the ability to make copies of things really fast by just holding down the control key and then f using the drafting assistant to find that endpoint. I click on my left mouse button and hold it down and I can drag a copy to this grid section and that grid section and that grid section. Now I'd like to hold down the control key and drag one more copy right there and come down and get my mirror tool and the mirror tool says pick your beginning reference line. Well, I'm just going to use this construction line and stroke zoom that and you'll notice my curve flipped over. That's all I really wanted to do. Get my selection arrow back, hold down the control key, come back and place a part there and a part there. Now that everything is going to get a little bit faster because I'm going to highlight, do a marquee selection around all of those, hold down the control key, and drag a copy to here and a copy to here. And let's do one more copy. Use the mirror tool and let's flip those. Come back and get the selection arrow, hold down the control key and bring a copy to here and a copy to here. Now we need to make the verticals. To make the verticals we will hold down the control key, drag a copy off here in space, come down over here and get our rotate tool and the rotate tool is set to 45 and it's asking me to enter the location to ro rotate about well if I wanted to I could change that to 90 and do it real fast but what the heck let's just leave it at 45 and you can watch it click and one more click brings it to 90 get my selection arrow back and now I can grab that endpoint and move that down to here hold down the control key again that's in the wrong spot, so we're going to go ahead and leave it there for right now. And we're going to bring one more copy. And let's use the mirror tool. And I can't see my construction line to get a good read for the drafting assistant, so I'm going to use this little tool right here. The arrow says if I stroke zoom to the right, it gets littler. If I stroke zoom to the left, it gets bigger. Well, that's really all I want to see. Come back and get my mirror tool and click there and flip that part. Come back here, hold down the control key and leave that there. And because this is a jigsaw puzzle, I really don't care that that one line is in there goofy. In fact, we're going to do some things to change all those in a bit anyway. 
Okay, there is our fundamental jigsaw puzzle. Now, one of the reasons why I like to use construction lines is that they are really easy to get rid of. Delete constructions. Voila. Now, the final step to our puzzle, we need to make each of these cloned lines uniquely different. And to do that, we will zoom in. We will highlight one line, control D, and it's time to add just, oops, remember I made that mistake before, I just want the point. Control D, and we want to make these all uniquely different. And I'm not going to do the entire puzzle, but it takes about 10 minutes. And when you're done, the entire puzzle will have every one of these curves with all their spline points uh, showing. The quickest way to turn all those off, come over to your selection arrow, double click it. Double clicking on the selection arrow highlights everything. Let's hit control D. I turned all my points on. Control D again turns it off. Click anywhere on the screen. Now, once that's done, you can send this to the printer. You can uh, take your print out to the shop, affix it to whatever it is you're going to make your puzzle out of, and you can go to your scroll saw and cut your pieces. And if you would really like to make an interesting puzzle, go ahead and try this in plexiglass. Have fun!